welcome to Minds and Souls. Thanks for stopping by. Today we have a very special guest. Uh, I have with me Tiara McKnight. We're going to be talking about something kind of heavy today, but we'll try not to make it too heavy. Um, but we're going to be talking today about the enemy is in my head. You know, I know from personal experience that, you know, sometimes when we start feeling down about ourselves, it is the perfect opening for the enemy to get in there and start planting seeds and planting doubt in our heads. So we felt this would be a great time to have a, uh, a guest speaker on and, and kind of just talk a little bit about how this has impacted both of us on a personal level in our lives lately and how we, you know, what sorts of things we have done to help when we feel the enemy attacking us. I guess we could start with like, personally, at what moments does he attack you the most? For me, like time of day wise, for me, it's like nighttime where the whole house is silent and no mm -hmm. one's really interacting. It's just quiet. Yeah. And that's when he plants those doubts in your mind of, oh, I wonder what's happening with this. And also I feel that he uses a lot of different tools, sometimes even the people around you to kind of, cause like, it's like he knows your pet peeves or your weaknesses. So he'll use somebody else to just press your button and it brings you to a dark place. Like for me, um, one of my uh, biggest insecurities, honestly, was not feeling good enough. And I don't know, I think that comes from being a child and having people compare me to my other siblings or um, yeah, basically that. <laughs> yeah. Or compare me to different people so that like even as an adult, I feel like he uses those moments and he uses those thoughts and to someone else who I feel loved by, like um, or my friends or even my husband, he'll use them to say something that makes me question, Am I a good mom? Or am I a good wife? Or And what what do you find um, what kind of precipitates it? What kick starts those thoughts and and going down that tunnel that just lets him in is there anything like um you know you wake up and you have a bad day or somebody says something to you that you know makes you a little self-conscious what what usually is the kind of the kickstarter to that yeah, i think it's like replay of moments in my head of like remembering like conversations and mm -hmm. the way that it's reacted and like it seems like every day my mind just has a mental replay of everything that went down then it starts to be like oh huh like what was that moment Older. And then that's when like he has room to sneak in yes. and just be like, yeah, he doesn't think that you're good, whatever. And you're just like, I know I had a I had a similar situation recently. Actually, it's funny that you bring that up because mm. I I went out to lunch with a friend and this was the first time having lunch with somebody since COVID. So. We were talking and I was kind of venting a little bit about some things that I'd been going through. And, you know, I'm new to Tulsa, so this is a new friend and we're still getting to know each other and still kind of figuring each other out. And I got home and I started thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, why did I say that? Why, why, why did I feel like I could be vulnerable like that and open myself up that much? What is she going to think about me? And then it just started spiraling and, and he got right in there and, yes. and I ended up having a horrible night <laughs> like my whole night was uh was ruined <laughs> the thoughts of the enemies is like a seed we have like good seeds and we also still have bad seeds and he plants those seeds and it just festers it will grow into something that you didn't even think that you were capable of and i feel like a lot of our insecurities or even those moments that he gets to us we allow them to fester so much that our actions end up going against our entire beliefs or core values or anything like that like even in this moment <laughs> in my head i'm just like you know i hear all these thoughts like oh you shouldn't have said that or oh you know <laughs> like just you just don't put yourself out there but i'm learning to ignore that inner critic or in the, in that inner voice to just do it and i feel like the enemy's perfect strategy is to question everything everything like everything everything like even when god gives you a word did he really say that like even with uh Maybe the serpent you heard him and, wrong right exactly <laughs> he couldn't you know, have said that, that. <laughs> exactly did he really say that you couldn't eat from that tree did he, did he really <laughs> and it makes you like those little thoughts just mm. like huh did i remember right or what what? Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe that was just not yeah maybe i maybe that was me yeah yeah maybe that was me and that was the hardest thing too is like it goes back to like discerning your voice versus god's voice 
And also because sometimes the devil will make you believe that God didn't say that. It was your own. It was you. It was your own. Yeah, it was basically you who said it. Your wishful ah. thinking. This is what you hope will happen. But you you really don't have the talent for that. No, you're real. that's not really what something you can do, you know? Exactly. Amen, sister, because I've been going through that <laughs> like these last few weeks too. Is as I feel like God's been starting to lead me in a direction. I, you know, I keep doubting whether I'm hearing him correctly. I keep questioning him, yeah. praying for clarification, more clarification, more clarification. So I'm like, because he keeps getting in there. No, that's really not, no, that's not what he said. You definitely like second guess everything. And it sucks. It's that gray area. When there's a gray area, like if God gives you a promise and you're just waiting, twiddling your fingers, waiting for that promise. It's like, I feel like, honestly, it's because we're so in, unsure about things. Things. That's his playing field. Like, yeah. if he gives you a promise, like, things are going to work out. Do we really take it as face value of, like, oh, yeah, we're, we hold that faith. But what happens when there's long spaces, like, there's, like, even with this whole COVID, when mm -hmm. does things get to the new normal? Like, so we're in this gray area where we're literally sitting with our own thought. And alone. it's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's, yes, alone. Dark, and that's another thing, isolation. Unsure, yep. Yep. insecure, scared, mm -hmm. not knowing what's going to happen, yep. when it's going to exactly. happen, when we're going to see our loved ones again. Exactly. This is yep. like the perfect. So then he plays on that. Yeah. This is like the devil's playground, you know? <laughs> It is. He, he's probably just like, yep, I'm going to mess you, mess you, mess you. I'm planting all these seeds and all these people. I can see it in my job just from the people that have been calling and needing mm -hmm. mental health services. Mm -hmm. I mean, my goodness gracious, people are scared. And you can tell that they're just insecure. And myself, too. And I tell people that. I'm like, I'm feeling everything you're feeling. <laughs> you know, this is, exactly. you're not alone here. But at the same time, I, I don't know if you're seeing this or feeling it, but but I also feel like people are searching right now. You know, I feel like people are searching for meaning, searching for something deeper. A lot of people are questioning, you know, or, or, or seeking faith right now, I guess, seeking comfort in faith. Oh, it's, it's like, it can go either way. Either we mm. use this time and like basically sit into these emotions and be the unsure and allow the dead, like the enemy to come into our heads and make us realize we're getting to a point of isolation or or we can use it as a time where we get closer to God. Because like you said, there's a lot of people who are reaching for something much more meaningful than um, what was before. At what point do you kind of just stop and say, wait a minute, wait a minute get behind me saying, <laughs> you know, obviously yeah. you're messing with me. You yeah. know, at what point are you able to identify? Because sometimes I know when we get in these negative thought patterns, it can literally ruin our entire day or our entire night, right? But at, what we have to do, I think, as Christians, especially, is to be is to be able to identify this is the, the enemy getting in there and, and, and causing us to doubt everything that the Lord yeah. is drawing us towards. So <sighs> it's, it's such a loaded question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Sorry. I know that it is something that the devil's working on if I'm constantly yelling at my kid, making a bigger deal than necessary. To be quite honest, it's hard. It's hard to sometimes determine a bad day versus like a bad week and allowing those planted thoughts. I guess when I do have those moments, I try to get out of those moments and get out of my head by honestly talking it out and usually just literally talking to God be like, I don't know if this is like me or not, but can you take this? Cause this, I don't have time for that. Or I will listen to some like worship music. Honestly, worship music is basically all in my house. Yeah. Whether it's like rock, or whatever you know like different types of <laughs> christian music yeah. but uh as it became like a like a soundtrack to my life almost mm -hmm. because it's like in those moments where i do feel like i'm not myself or that those seeds are festering i start hearing a song or something play that basically speaks to the exact situation and it kind of leads into some sort of worship and then it leads to huh i wonder what about that scripture so then i go back and find that scripture and then it kind of just settles down from there it's, it's almost like what are you feeding yourself every day are yes. you feeding yourself with the voices around you I, th I like what you said about what are you feeding yourself every day because I you know I think a lot of people and this is you know back in the day before I kind of got away from my faith and everything church was a weekly thing and that was it the rest of the week it was like church what I, you know 
didn't think about anything. Maybe my parents did, they were in a different place than I was. I was just a kid really. But now, you know, over the past year, getting back onto my faith walk, I have just immersed myself, you know, in daily worship music, in daily sermons, multiple sermons a day, a constant dialogue with the Lord. Literally talk to him like I'm talking yeah. to you right now. Just have complete conversations. Exactly. You know, in my empty house, <laughs> yep. and, you know, talking through stuff, you know, as I'm feeling it. But I, I have to do the same thing as be like, you know, I have to cast this onto him because I can, I can now start to sense like when there are certain things that trigger me, you know, that trigger me to this yeah. anger and like anxiety and it's immediate and it's strong. It's like super strong and it goes from like zero to a hundred, you know? So I'm like, okay, Lord, obviously this is something I am struggling with. So I need you. I need you to take this. I need you to either help me process this or, you know, or, you know, help me, help me get over this because I, I I'm obviously not doing so good myself because my innards right now are just like all tied up in knots. So, but, or yeah, and I'll throw on a sermon or I'll throw on, Spotify, my favorite worship, you know, song, and just kind of just sit in it for a while until finally I'll feel myself starting to kind of calm down. 